This week I'm doing a review of Sam Raimi's newest movie, Drag Me to Hell. Um, before I get into praising this movie, as I liked it very much, I'll get into the plot. Um, basically, Drag Me to Hell is about a is about a young woman, uh, Christine Brown, who is a loan officer at a bank. And, you know, she's, she's very ambitious and she's fighting for this promotion of assistant manager against another guy she works with, Stu. And the guy Stu she works with is a bit of a suck-up and he's trying everything he can do to get the promotion and you know she she keeps pestering her boss about it and stuff and one day a old an elderly woman by the name of Mrs. Ganush comes in there and she asks for an extension on her loan and so Christine goes to her boss to ask about it and the boss says you know basically alludes to the fact that you know a manager I mean an assistant manager would make a tough decision here so Selfishly, she refuses to give the old woman a loan, and the old woman is very upset by this, and leads to a brilliantly done fight scene, one of the best scenes in the movie, between Christine and Mrs. Ganoush in a parking garage, and it's, I don't want to give any of the details away, but it's a lot of fun, it involves staplers and dentures and nasty goo, it's, it's a great scene. But by the end of it, Christine ends up becoming cursed by Mrs. Ganoush. So, then Christine goes to a psychic because she's starting to hear strange sounds and just there's something different about everything to her. And the psychic reveals to her that she has been cursed by the Lamia, which is a curse that you will be tortured by the spirit for three days, and on the end of the third day, you will be dragged to hell. So, this pretty much sets up the entire movie for Christine to be tormented by the spirit a lot. And she gets knocked around so much in this movie that this would make Ash from the Evil Dead movies very proud. I mean, she gets the crap beat out of her in this movie in so many ways. And so her three days are spent being tormented by the spirit and figuring out how to rid herself of this curse. Now, this movie it has a bit of a familiar plot. It feels like we're on ground that's already been shredded, but Sam Raimi's energy, his his camera angles, I mean, he's got a lot of Dutch angles in it whenever something horrific is going to happen, and this is like the most, it feels like this is such a personal movie to him. There's so many uh, Sam Raimi touches in there and stuff. The humor is great. It was written by um, Sam Raimi and his brother Ivan Raimi, who also wrote Army of Darkness and uh, Spider-Man 3, I believe. And I had heard things that the script wasn't the best script that was written. I mean, people who had, like, read early scripts of it and stuff like that. But, you know, and I was a little disappointed to hear the movie was going to be PG-13. But that's just because my bias against PG-13 horror movies, because they generally suck. And most of them suck, actually. And this flick sets a whole new precedent for PG-13 horror movies, or horror movies in general, because Sam Raimi makes an effective, scary-as-hell movie that's fun at the same time without using loads of gore or swearing or nudity. And he does it all very effectively. You're not sitting there going, well, that scene could have used some gore. This movie doesn't really require that Sam Raimi touch, like, of the original Evil Dead. This movie feels much more like Evil Dead 2 and Army of Darkness, almost combined. And the on the positive notes, the acting is great in this movie. I mean, Sam Raimi and his brother really um, set out these great characterizations for all of them, all the characters. I mean, I can't remember the actress's name who plays the lead character, but she is great in it. I've never seen her. In, I'd, I've never seen her in another movie before, but she's phenomenal in this. Um, Justin Long, who I just despise, was very likable in this flick. I really liked him, and he plays the main character's uh, boyfriend, and he does a very good job. He's a very sympathetic character. I mean, there's a couple scenes where he takes leaps of faith in believing that there's a curse. I mean, he doesn't really believe his girlfriend is cursed, that, you know, she's a couple screws are loose. But he loves her, so he keeps going with it. The character who plays the psychic she goes to was really great. And the real star of the show is, I don't know who the actress is, but the actress who plays uh, Mrs. Ganoush. It was also, it's one of K&B's effects, one of their best makeups I've seen them do in a while, is uh, Mrs. Ganoush's face and some of the uh, more terrorizing sequences and she does a complete great job I mean the whole sequence where she's asking for the loan is great I mean she's stealing hard candy from the desk and everything and it's a lot of fun I mean the characterizations are there I mean this is a movie that they definitely took time to nail down the characters and to really get you to care about them and what was happening um, 
Another positive note is there's a lot of Sam Raimi camera work in here. I mean, a lot of, um, sort of, if you remember the Evil Dead films, how there was always, you know, the spirit, like, in the woods coming towards the cabin. There's a lot of camera shots like that. I mean, you never really see the spirit of the Lamia. I mean, it sort of terrorizes her in shadows and it possesses different things. I mean, there's one particularly great sequence in the movie. It's one of my favorite scenes Sam Raimi has ever done, which involves a seance towards the end of the film. And there's a bit with that involves a goat that is just brilliant. I don't want to give it away, because when I saw it, I was like, this is genius. The entire audience was laughing and in complete terror at the same time. Now, this movie is... It's very scary, too. I mean, it's definitely one of the scarier... I mean, I was, like, drenched in sweat. When me and my friend walked out of the theater, he turned to me, and he's not a horror movie fan. He said, Brendan... I am not cut out for horror movies. That was too intense for me. And he was just like, I am drenched in sweat. And I was like, me too. So the movie definitely worked. It wasn't like they had a heat turned on in the theater. But uh, it was definitely a very suspenseful and terrifying ride. Um, the cinematography is great. He is the same cinematographer from Evil Dead 2. Uh, movie looks beautiful. All the visual effects are great. I'm not a huge fan of visual effects in horror movies because I feel like if there's anything that can take you out of a movie quickly, it's visual effects. And he uses a lot of visual effects in this flick, um, which I wish they would have tried to do practical effects, but this isn't like an effects heavy movie at all. So it didn't bother me at all. And I got over it pretty quickly, so. And the re there are a couple of cool treats in there for horror movie fans. During, like I mentioned, the seance scene has a few Evil Dead references that fans will immediately pick up on. And uh, the Oldsmobile classic is in there. And the movie opens with the uh, Universal logo from, like, I believe circa 1985, which had everyone in my audience clapping because I saw it in a room full of you know, movie geeks and stuff. So everyone was very pumped up about that. And the uh, score in the movie is great. It definitely builds suspense. Um, the only negative points I have is there are a lot of shock scares, you know, like something pops into the frame and you know, the music goes up all the way. But it doesn't bother me because Sam Raimi's done that before in the Evil Dead films, so it just didn't bother me as much. I just felt like it was a little cliche. And the plot is overall a bit predictable. But he makes up for that with great characters and terrific, ter just terrific blocking with the scenes. I mean, his when the horror scenes are kicking in, it's it's great. I mean, he did it perfectly. I can't think of another way to do it. And there's no other director who could have done what Raimi did with this material. As a hardcore Evil Dead fan, I was skeptical about Sam Raimi's supposed return to horror, only PG-13 horror. And I was very impressed. This is already one of my favorite movies of the year. This is my favorite horror movie I've seen this year. And I was going to do this review last night after I would seen the movie. But I felt I would just sit there and be like, this movie's so awesome. I couldn't, like, I wouldn't stop saying that. Because it was. I had so much fun watching it. There's plenty of great gags. I'm going, like, an anvil, uh, embalming fluid, uh, goats. I mean... Raimi, obviously, you could tell he had a lot of fun coming up with these gags, and I can't wait to see the movie again when it gets released next week, and I highly recommend this. I say see this. Whether or not you're a horror movie fan, you'll have a great time with this flick. The humor is top-notch, the directing is top-notch, everything is perfect. The acting, I can't give this movie a bad score on any note. So I say, go see Drag Me to Hell. Don't be uh, dissuaded by the PG-13 rating because, honestly, it doesn't matter when you're in the theater because the movie is great. And, you know, it doesn't take an R rating to make a true horror movie. Unfortunately, it's a precedent that's been set by really crappy PG-13 horror movies lately. But this is one of the better ones. I've. This is one of the best ones I've seen in modern horror cinema. So do yourself a favor next week and take some friends and go see Drag Me to Hell. This is Brendan for R&B Reviews.